Hello, internet friends. This is Danielle Pierce, creator of Real Estate Profit Lab, talking to a very special guest today, Miss Tracy. And Hello. Um, before we get started, as always, come in, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and share button. And as always, we're talking about property preservation mastery. Uh, we're talking uh, to some of our past and current um, best you know, students and performers, and Tracy is one of those. So let's get started. How are you doing today, Tracy? I'm doing great, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you chilling at home, I see, eating a late lunch or um, early dinner. Yes, yep, <laughs> just chilling at home. Tracy, what made you get started with property preservation? Like, what was the trigger? Well, actually, the trigger was you. Um, watching you, um, the success you were having with it and actually doing the books yeah. and seeing what it was all about and just you encouraging that any of us could do it. Yeah. So I took your advice and started my own property preservation business. Yeah. And then when was that? I feel like that was like so long ago. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, it was 14, 2014. Man, I was married then. I was living in another state then. Oh my gosh, time is something. Uh, yes, it is. It flies. It waits for no one, I tell you. <laughs> it does. Time has done you well, honey, because you are looking fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you always look good. You, your daughter, oh, your. Thank um, you. Who was that you, that you look just like? Your grandmother that you post a picture of? Is that my your? grandmother, yeah. Medea. Yeah. Miss yeah. Alice Wilkerson. I yeah. love that lady. Yeah, all from here on up. I'm like, yeah, that's that's Miss <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You stole almost her entire face. Um, so you guys were working out of the Chicago market, right? Chicago. Yes, we Minnesota. were working out of the Chicago market. Okay. Um, we never ventured into any other markets because we ended up getting enough um here. However, we did, did do a lot of traveling in the surrounding Chicago suburban areas. Okay, like DuPage County? Uh, DuPage County, Will County, um, Kane County. We, we also did uh, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, and then we also did Indiana. Okay. We did the east side of Indiana, which was closest to Chicago. Yeah, East Chicago, Gary Hammond, Cherville, Merrillville. Cherville, like yep. Yeah. We did that. So talk to, tell me about your experience working with family and friends. Did you try that or in the past? Like, or, and if you did, how did it work out for you? Well, I think um, the listeners might be optimistic for me to say, oh yes, it was great. We worked with family and it worked out. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately that did not work out. Okay. Um, working with family and friends, yeah. but nevertheless, it didn't stop the business from being successful. Yeah. And that was because your husband um, was, he, he kind of jumped on board. Did he jump on board right away or kind of like a little bit after you got started and he got all in? Is that what happened? No, he kind of jumped on it like right away Yeah. because after we were shown the opportunity, um, he was looking for something different to do because you know yeah. my husband is corporate america yeah yeah and he was looking for something else to do because yeah. he had been doing auditing for like 11 or 12 years at that time yeah. and he's a workhorse so yeah. this was like yeah so preservation just i think he lost about 20 pounds the first <laughs> year <laughs> and you know he's already skinny <laughs> Yeah. You were you were you seemed really surprised. I remember at the time about how how much he was able to like to tackle and kind of get started. Like, cause he wasn't really handy initially, right? Like, he wasn't. No, he. <laughs> and you know what? Because of that preservation business, he is really really handy now. He does a lot of things. He lays flooring, <laughs> drywall. Oh he does gosh. a lot of handy stuff now because yeah. of his experience starting our own property preservation business, TNT yeah. Property Preservation. TNT. Tell me about your experience with contractors overall, because I know that that's a, a, a point of contention for many people. It is challenging. It's hard. They kind of speak their own language. 
Um, what was your experience like uh, finding contractors, keeping them on board? I mean, I kind of know, but just go ahead and tell the people anyway. Well, it's all the all of the above of yeah. what you said. It is challenging, but if you find the right contractor, you can you can make a good run. Yeah. Um, sometimes they some stay longer than others. Yeah. It just depends on what you know what they're doing because a lot of contractors if they're contracting with you they are contracting with someone else yes yes so sometimes it's just really a time thing where they if you if you're busy and they have their own set of work yeah and some of it is just some other scary stuff where you just yeah. can't explain yeah but it is challenging however it is possible to find someone that fits your um your work ethic yeah that you can team up with and help you grow your business. Yeah, I always say for me, I, I would say for every 10 people that I run across, I would say two typically turn out to be um, th that might hang around. Is that a good percentage? Would you say 20%? That is maybe? a great percentage. <laughs> <laughs> we might even say one sometimes, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah so. I would agree. <laughs> um, so I know that you, are a serial entrepreneur, right? So you didn't, you weren't, when we met, you were doing um, five links and you introduced me to that. Um, yes. And you were you didn't have a nine to five then. So is that still the case now? What, what was your experience like with that? Like, I know that Ray is still working or was working. What's the situation with that? I'm still entrepreneur. <laughs> I am still entrepreneur. I'm still doing my own thing. <laughs> So um, one of the things when we were doing the preservation work, um, I started seeing that some of the work orders that we were getting sent by the bank yeah. and the maintenance side, because remember we, we, we jumped to the maintenance side yep. of preservation. And so I started noticing that certain banks do things differently. Yeah. So to secure our bag, I decided to start seeking clients on our own. Yeah. And that's, you know, what he's still doing. He yeah. still has TNT. We're still doing um, maintenance. He's got his GC license. So we do that. But also one of the things that um, I used to post on Facebook was uh, the janitorials that yeah. we have that we did yeah. with property preservation. Yeah. So I also took that concept and said, I can do this on my own. Yeah. And created Happy Place Cleaning Services. So now I run a cleaning services while he runs his maintenance service. Yeah. And it all started because of preservation. Yeah. I love that. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because it, it um I know for me, if I had to go back and work a nine to five, I don't I'm not gonna say I would die, but I, I would probably die on the inside. And I think you feel exactly that same way, Tracy. Where it's like, once you get a taste of it, it's kind of like, ooh, this might be a struggle right now, but I know that I can't handle going to report into a job. Is that kind of where you're at right now? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly where I am. I am unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> unemployable. I love it. I love at it. At this point in my life, that's what I am. I'm okay with that because when you are the type of person that always likes to think outside the box, mm -hmm. then you have to create. Yeah. You have to create for yourself, but really you're also creating for other people in the community. Yeah. Because as you create, you create jobs, you yeah. create opportunities for other people, just as you did for us. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What about, um, how does your husband feel about the uh, entrepreneur piece? And I want to mention it because there's like this push for entrepreneurship where people think it's like trendy and it's sexy and everybody should do it. And I don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to that thought process. So is he okay with still doing the corporate and doing having his own business or is the plan to be eventually a full-time entrepreneur or he never wants to be a full-time entrepreneur? Where does he stand with that? Well, definitely when we first started this venture, he was just all corporate. But as he realized that he had the power to take control of his income, yeah. that's when the mindset shifted into, yeah. I really want to work towards doing this full time. Yeah. So he is definitely still 
corporate, but also he is an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> he is an entrepreneur. Well, let so me give you that's... something to, uh, to think about for, for, for both of you guys. Well, you only have, uh, well, I don't know if the, just the one child that's in the house, right? Uh, she might be, yeah, I don't know if this will be a factor for her, but my health insurance is for 2021, uh, 1850 a month for me and three kids. So those corporate benefits in terms of health insurance um, are definitely something that you want to, you know, think heavily about, you know, when you're transitioning from corporate to full time. Oh, yes, we've thought about that. And the good thing about his um, corporate job as an auditor is it's he's mobile. Yeah. So he can work from home. He doesn't necessarily have to be in the office. So it gives him the flexibility to do both, yeah. but it also gives us the advantage to keep that good old health insurance. That yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about the, literally the only thing I miss about uh, corporate. And oddly enough, my background is audit too. I did audit and uh, accounting and I hated every second, every millisecond that I had to work in, in that industry. I hate all of it. <laughs> it's very stressful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's just all about repositioning yourself. Is is that's the conversation in our house now? Repositioning. How can we reposition ourselves with what we've all what we've got to make more? Yeah. yeah. And not just more money, but more opportunities to um, create streams. Yeah. Yeah. Different seems, streams of income. It seems like you're um, more of the visionary role. Is that kind of how how the? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's just like, oh, okay, let's do that. <laughs> And I, I mentioned this because I, I have most of my um, people that I talk to and many of my clients, prospective clients, they're women. And it's that same dynamic where the woman is always like way out here. And the guy's just like, oh, what now? <laughs> What's the new idea? What's the What's, new business? <laughs> you know, when you're a forward thinker and you have made some pretty good decisions, not all of them have been good ones, yeah. but then they just learn to trust what you say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And just say, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so that's the advice. Just say, okay, you know, you know. Just say, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for preservation, I know that you guys have transitioned to doing uh, preservation in a different capacity. Um, but in terms of your, your, your best month or your best year or the results that you were able to achieve with that, what would you... Um, what would you say that was? And you don't have to give specific numbers. I know I, I do that all the time, but everybody is not comfortable doing that. But just any ranges that you want to throw out in terms of revenue. We did pretty good. Um, I think our second year was our best year mm -hmm. in the preservation. Mm -hmm. We did, uh, it was like over 250,000, I believe. Mm -hmm. Our second year. So that was our best year with Phenomenal. doing preservation which was great. Phenomenal. And then, so from basically just, cause I know people are going to be asking. So you took the preservation business, still the same name, and then you created happy, happy place cleaning, which is uh, essentially just in cleaning, a cleaning company, right? For yeah. Residential, residential cleaning, mm -hmm. residential properties in the Chicagoland area. And you were able to hire other people to, to help with that. Right. Oh yes. Like yeah. the first two years of the business I cleaned, um personally yeah. just to get the experience of it plus we were already you yeah. know i was already doing it for preservation you know the, you know they didn't pay much for the the janitorial services right. so i'm just like i'm gonna do it myself right and i clean for the first two years but now that income is pretty much passive for me yeah. i just hire people and they do the work yeah people I'm that need them yeah I'm glad you mentioned that because everybody always wants to like kind of get to the point where you're at right now where you're at home and you chilling and work is still getting done, but you obviously have paid your dues. So. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this arthritis in this right hand, baby. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> like, I, I ain't even cleaning my own house. You hear me? <laughs> I'm telling you, I, cause you know, after a while, you know, cleaning was not one of those things where I'm like, yay, I'm cleaning, but yet I wasn't beneath cleaning. Right. It was an experience that I chose to embark upon so that I can um, help 
Yeah. You can't show somebody how to do something like yourself. You're very successful with the property preservation business. How can you show someone else how to do it if you hadn't done it yourself? Yeah. And that was the whole attitude that I had. And so I went out there and I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned yeah. and then said no more. And, just, <laughs> and then just start now. Now I will do it if someone can't do it or yeah. I don't want to jeopardize you losing a client. I will right. do it. Right. But now it's pretty much passive income, and that's that's pretty much what everybody, you know, right. you want to get to that point right. where you can just do your administrative stuff. Yeah, you can create. Like I like to create. Yeah, and then I can, you know, pass that opportunity to someone else. I agree. So you like to use your brain power, so to speak. Um, I do. Yeah. I like to work smarter not yeah. harder yeah but i want to make sure that people are catching the part about you doing all the work up front because that seems to get lost in translation for like so many people where they're like i just want passive income it's like well you know to get passive income it's not passive to get there right like you gotta you know you have to put in some work and uh like you said about cleaning you can't if you hire someone if you hire someone at the very beginning then you have no expectations that you can lay out to them because you don't know what it entails. Like you don't know what to tell them that they should do, how they should clean it, how long it should take, what products to use, uh, what materials to use, what's Absolutely. the inside of somebody's house. You know, what, you know, what do you do and not do? Like that comes from being in the field. Experience. Absolutely. Remember the, the postings of me cutting grass? I remember. <laughs> Listen. I was laughing so hard at that. And I would say, I hate cutting grass. I've only done it. I could probably count on two hands the number of times I've cut grass. Um, I can't do a winterization, but I know exactly how they should be done, though. Um, most things I know how they should be done, and I can explain and articulate it, but I don't, I can't do it. Well, I'm a country girl. I grew up cutting acres of it, so <laughs> I didn't mind it at all, cutting that grass. <laughs> but it just it 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 allowed us to keep most of our revenue. Yeah. We we realized if we could do most of the work, we yeah. could keep most of our most revenue. Of mm -hmm. And that's how we were able to have a great I mean our first year wasn't that bad. It was yeah. like 150. Yeah. The yeah. first year of preservation, so Yeah. And then from there you can obviously um pay off um debt, which I think is what and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I know for me, I've only been debt free since as of this year, but the debt is kind of what keeps you into doing things that you don't necessarily want to do is because you owe so much money. And once you can get out from under that, it's like literally the sky's the limit. You can start any business you want. If it fails, it's okay. It's like, okay, well, we'll do something different, but it doesn't like, you don't have all that pressure because you don't owe thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Is that kind of what you had? Yeah, that's true. We're still, um, actually, we're still paying off a couple of things from yeah. doing the preservation. Yeah. Because um, as you know, you have to pay for everything up front, yeah. Yeah. which is fine. But to my point earlier, when we must have a plan, yeah. when I was telling my husband, we need to start something on our own just in case yeah. the bank says we're shutting down. Yeah. And of course, that's what they did to the maintenance side. Yeah. They sold it to someone else. Yeah. For that particular bank. For, for that, that particular, particular one. Yeah. So, yeah, but it does. But we're, you know, when you create something for yourself, you can set your price. Yeah. And that's what we are doing now. And it's helping us get some of that debt paid yeah. down. Yeah. And that's what? important. What does your day look like? Um, I don't want to say your day now because I see you're at home right now. I hear something. <laughs> right so before well, you got to this point, <laughs> what did your day look like? Like, were you on the phone, on the computer, looking at pictures? Like, what, what are you doing? Talking to contractors? Yeah, that's what my day looks like. Realtors, contractors. Um, also, we're into uh, community um, investments with our partnerships shall i say not investments but partnerships so you know the economy kind of it is what it is right now yeah. so what we're doing is partnering up with people who are in the same arena you know real estate yeah. and so that helps so if you have um i'm talking to my friend who's an interior designer 
and she's saying, okay, I'm doing this house and I need a painter. Yep. Oh, TNT can paint that. Oh, yep. and then I'm staging this house and I need a cleaner. Oh, I can do that. Yes. So that's, you know, and we're all doing that for each other. So that's pretty much what your day, your network, yeah. Yeah. you get your administrative stuff, you um, delegate your cleanings yeah. and you do your, your marketing, your advertising. Yeah. Um, that's just me. I love to be behind the scenes and the computer. <laughs> I love to create. I know. That's I why I'm so glad that you're here today. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So that is, that's my day to day. That, that is my day to day. I, I multitask between happy place and TNT still. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but we've gotten some really, really good leads and contacts just by partnering up with like-minded people. Yeah. So the networking piece is so important when you're starting your own business. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I was talking to Letha yesterday. She's a, another, she's a, uh, she came through the program earlier this year. She works in New York and she just said that she didn't have her nine to five to lean on anymore. And so she was like, this has to work. So she, when things would slow down for her, she would go create other ways to like still make money still in the same industry. But she was just like, she never was the type to just sit back and wait. And obviously, I know you're not that type either, where you're just going to sit back and wait. <laughs> you're like, no, we're going to no, make no. something happen. That's that forward thinking. You always yeah. have to stay a step ahead yeah. of what you're doing because you never know. You might have a slowdown. What are you going to do? Yeah. That's how Happy Place was created. Yeah. I'm like, look, if the maintenance side slows down, cleaning is... Easy. is the thing yeah. everybody wants cleaning even through yeah. this time of covid yep everybody wants cleaning yeah because it's more like a lifestyle now yeah. it's a part of your health cleaning is a part of your health yeah so more and more people are looking for cleans because they want germ-free homes yeah or they got kids and they, or they like, have children. <laughs> yes. Yes. But who knew that the pandemic, the pandemic would enrich your business because people are thinking more about safety and clean. Cause everybody was at home. So it's kind of like, well, if I'm going to be here, then this needs to be like as great as it possibly can. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like uh, general contractors and like Home Depot, their stock and like it stayed busy. It's still busy now because people are like getting stuff done around the house. And it's just, you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made that connection beforehand. But now it's like, you know, I, and you realize that everybody is not um, struggling. Like some people just have it like that where they're getting their house together. And yeah. The real estate industry is booming right now. Yeah. Normally the slowdown that realtors experience or contractors is not the case yeah. at all right now. Yeah. But I wanted to strategically do businesses that correlate with one another yeah. so that we can work together. Yeah. That was like intentional. Yeah, I figured it was intentional. So to that mm -hmm. point, what advice would you have? Cause I know people are gonna be like, well, Tracy, how'd you start your cleaning business? Tracy. Tell us about, you know, preservation. Tracy, tell us about the maintenance side. So what advice would you give for anybody who's on the fence or anybody who's thinking about these industries? What would you tell them? I would tell them to do their research first. Mm -hmm. That is so important. Um, talk to people who are successful at doing these things. Mm -hmm. Like you, you were very successful and very intentional with what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And so it helped me to understand what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. So people need to understand what they're getting into. Do your research first. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I did with the cleaning service too. I got involved in this Facebook group okay. where this guy named Rohan was oh, teaching. Remember yeah. Rohan? Mm -hmm. That's and I was like, wow, he made millions of dollars doing a cleaning service. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's how I got started by talking yeah. to other people, like-minded people that was doing the same thing. So that's my advice for people and not to wait because yeah. people, you will wait yourself into poverty. Yeah. Um, if you're always going to, if you're waiting for, I mean, seriously, if you're, if you're always going to wait until I get my income tax or I'm going to wait until I get another job, I'm going to wait then you'll never get started. Yeah. Figure out what it is you want to do, research, 
keep your eye open, learn and listen before yeah. you act. And that was very important. I, this seems like a great time to bring up this concept of saturation um, that many people are concerned about. And I always tell them that they shouldn't be. And I say that because most people are half-assed in everything that they do and across any industry, be it real estate agents, property preservation, um, financial advisors, whatever. Most people are not doing 100% effort. So it's very easy to stand out. But I read a quote and it said that saturation was, it said saturation is a myth created by lazy people to justify why they can't get the results that other people are getting. And I'm saying this to you because you started a cleaning service and obviously there are thousands and thousands of cleaning services, right? But nevertheless, you're able to start one and be successful. Same for preservation, same for the maintenance side as well. And so I, my theory is that it depends upon the person that is, that, that started the, the company. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I certainly agree. Even at the time when we started doing preservation, after we finished your program, um, people were saying, oh, why are you guys getting in the, you know, getting into that Chicago is saturated. Yep. You'll never get any business in Chicago. And guess what? We made that $250,000 mm -hmm. in the Chicago market. Yep. And it's not saturated. It's about your mindset, like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier. And the reason why we were able to be successful, because we understood that first that we could be. Yeah. And secondly, um, we didn't turn down any work orders. I remember that. <laughs> remember, like, I think you told us that. You said, don't turn down anything. And that's how we were able to do it because then the bank started saying, well, we noticed that Thaddeus isn't turning down any work orders. Let me just start giving them more. And that's what happened. Yeah. So, you know, people, they'll say it's saturated. But then they'd be lazy. But, yeah, but if, but, but if the bank asks you to go an extra mile, you're like, well, I'm not driving an hour for $50 yeah. or $150. I'm not driving an hour for $150. Well, I am. Yeah. I'll drive an hour for $150 because the job that they asked us to do maybe took 30 minutes of his time to do. Yeah. So you're really like at $50 an hour. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, you have to learn how to break things down and, and let it make sense. Yeah. Cause if, are you making $50 an hour now? Do no. You, no. you don't, you see what I'm saying? So sometimes it's just how you strategically put your mindset in yeah. the right place. Yeah. So saturation has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, people say, oh, it's, a, it's so much competition with cleaning. Well, then learn how to do it right. Oh, girl, you better. Oh, I love <laughs> learn, it. <laughs> learn, learn, learn how to do it right. Yeah. Um, when people call my business from my Google search, I yeah. always ask them, hey, how did you hear about my business? Oh, we Googled you and you're your website and everything was so professional yeah. and you had really great reviews. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important. A lot of people, they want to start a business, but they don't want to invest in the business. Yeah. You know, you need a website. Yeah. You need a presence. You need to look big, even if you're small. Yeah. Nobody knows that, but you. Yep. So saturation, I totally agree, has nothing to do with you and your intention for your business. What's your plan for, for 2021? Where do you want to, where do you see yourself doing? I see myself just growing yeah. in physical, you know, in any way I can grow, whether it's mental, physical, um, business wise. Um, matter of fact, I'm right now I'm repositioning my business and I'm working with a marketing company mm -hmm. that's, um, does Tiffany's and, you know, just to make my company, uh, yes, take, take it to the next level. So you always have to understand that in business, you, you don't know it all. You can't do everything, but if you try to do that, your business will keep hitting that wall over yeah. and over again. So this year I decided to reposition myself and stop hitting that wall and start delegating parts of my business to people who know how to do that. Yeah. So that's what we have to do. Stop being cheap. Don't invest in your business. Keep trying to be the marketer, the media. No, 
you yeah. have to give that away so that you can grow. So yeah, that, I made that same shift this year too. Yep. And that's my shift this year. Repositioning my business, getting a better website, getting better media presence. Yeah. Um, getting a better logo. Yeah. Um, just learning ways where my business can speak yeah. to the masses. So yeah. that way that you will attract business and you're not chasing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's called uh, attraction-based marketing. Um, attraction-based marketing and just really investing in myself and stop hitting the wall. Yeah. I had to go beyond and give things away to the professionals who know how to take my business to the next level. So that's what I'm doing. Let me ask you this, my last question. I know that I think I was supposed to have my last question like two questions ago, but I'm curious <laughs> now. Um, because you're in a position now where you you have created these businesses and you are hiring people to help you with the do complete the actual work. So does it are you happy about that? That you're able to um, bring on people and maybe give folks a job or give them a way to make some extra money and just kind of put them in position to 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 do better. Um, and then also at the same time, giving yourself some the ability to sit at home and, and be on your computer and kind of um, overseeing everything. So does that is that a good feeling for you? That is a great feeling for me. Because you, this was intentional too. Everything that I do for my business is not just for me and my family. I'm always thinking about our community yeah. and how we can help other people. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, there's no jobs. But when we have the mindset to create and not just being a part of creation, yeah. then we do create opportunities for other people. So it really does feel good yeah. to help someone else else take care of their household through my creation yeah yeah so yes yeah, I, love I can that. tell That's, I can tell <laughs> yeah, that is the most fulfilling part about it that yeah. you can help other people yeah yeah I'm not trying to hold anyone back I'm trying to enrich them so if someone comes to me and says hey I'm so inspired by you like you did and said hey I want to start my own service then let me show you how. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think that um, you and Ray have, like y'all are, if there was a prototype of like a husband and wife couple that that I think would just, you know, just really gets it and works well together and um, complement each other. I think you and Ray really complement, because I know that Ray is an auditor. So I know I kind of have an idea of his mindset already because auditors and accountants are a very particular type of people. And you are this free spirited, like, you know, <laughs> love and light and, you know, we do my Thank walk you. by the lake and go walk yes. for five miles. And <laughs> but, oh, yes. I need that too from the piece. <laughs> you know what, that, you know what, Danielle, when you are a giver, of yourself, sometimes you need to know how to self-care and take time for yourself. Yeah. Because takers, the only thing they know how to do is keep taking, mm -hmm. and givers only know how to keep giving. Yeah. And so we have to learn that balance. Yeah. And that's why I take the time to do that five miles on the lakefront or just lay out in the sun. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are entrepreneurs because we want to enjoy what? Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. We want to enjoy our freedom. And that is the biggest um, enjoyment of creating on your own because you get to also enjoy the freedom yeah. Yeah. for yourself. Yep, yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, this has been so great. I'm so happy of the direction that you and uh, Ray have gone in. I'm glad that you agreed to be on video because I think that it's one thing <laughs> for me to be on video all the time, even though I really don't like video. Nobody ever believes me when I say that. I really would just rather read and write. But um, I think that you need to, it's important that you share your story so that other people can be inspired by it. Because I mean, literally, you never know who's watching and what they're going to learn or glean from you. And it is powerful when you see people who are like, oh, wait, I have an accounting degree. Do you mean I could do this and that? That's yes, a difference maker. Yes, it's about empowering. Yeah. And one last thing I would like to add before we end this um, is that we also need to understand that we can have credit, but we need to understand how to use it. Yeah. And so with everybody's initiative to try to start their businesses and grow and be successful, please understand you have to do the credit piece yeah. first. Yeah. You have to, 
even with preservation, yeah. it, with all of it, yeah. please be concerned about the credit piece first. Yeah. Because that is the difference yeah. of what kind of help you can get that I talked about. Mm -hmm. the, the people you can hire to help you, mm -hmm. the equipment that you may need, the, the, the resources that you need to run a business. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have it out of yeah. pocket. Yeah. But we must invest in ourselves in another way. And that means, you know, get with someone to help you with that piece. So yeah. that won't, won't be an obstacle for you because it's hard yeah. when you don't have good credit. Yeah. Yeah. Life is, is much harder. <laughs> Everything is harder. We've all been there, honey. All we, been have there. All, we have all been there. And Three I times. would like to. Yes, I just want to, I don't want to burst people's bubble, but I want to be real and yeah. say that is really the first step to you creating is to make sure that you have all the, th the, the elements set in place yeah. to move forward with your plan. And that must be on the list. <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, as we all know, as you mentioned, when you're stressed about money, you don't make the best decisions, um, period whether that be business, personal, whatever, like your decision-making is compromised. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, why did I do this again? Like, oh yeah, I was stressed about money. <laughs> yes. Yes. Why did I do that? Oh, cause I needed it at the time. You needed money. Yeah. And then you take yeah. on clients that you don't want to work with because you needed money and the clients work your nerves. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, know I just about wanted that. to say that. That, I just wanted to say that being so important because it's a dialogue in our community that we really don't yeah. discuss or talk about. And that is so important, especially now with the world is changing to a digital world. It is. And to that end, um, uh, we're going to, I, I got, I'm going to talk to you just a second when I close this out, but you guys, again, if you're just tuning in, I'm Danielle Pierce, creator of Real Estate Profit Lab, talking to the amazing Tracy Finley Elliott of Happy Place Cleaning and TNT <laughs> Maintenance Services. And um, she and her husband have just done remarkable work in the community and for themselves. So please be sure to like, subscribe, share, and leave some words of affirmation or encouragement for Tracy as they continue to expand their businesses. Come back here tomorrow, same time, same place for the next um, Q&A session with uh, another student. All right. In the meantime, sending you guys love, light, peace, blessings, grace, and clarity. Thank you, Tracy, for tuning in. Or Thank for you. Us. And I'll see you guys next time.